why did the education students enlist to participate in the research? What we found was that the students were indicating they wanted to help reduce their own stress, so they were finally going to do something for themselves. Um, but there were students that were involved or enrolled in it just for um, the mindfulness part and to get that on their resume or to bring it into their classrooms. Why do you think that having a group setting in the program assisted them in participating and being more open? The group format was a really important piece. What we found was that participants really were able to open up. It normalized. So hearing other people talk um, normalized their own thoughts and feelings. And we made this environment uh, safe, judgment-free, and confidential. So what they found over the weeks was this building trust in group and then finding a place where they could come and really be themselves and really be able to open up in an honest and authentic way I think was really foundational. Yeah. Do you think that using art with mindfulness is something which is essential for education students? But having mindfulness made accessible through art, through an art-based um, methods is, is key to allowing youth to access it. So again, by giving that to teachers, teachers will have a better understanding of what that is and be able to deliver it to their youth. Yeah. After being a part of this over the 12 weeks that we were doing it, I think what I really found essential was that, that the ones, even the students who had come to this program for mindfulness for their resume or to mm -hmm. learn it for their classrooms, it became about them. It shifted and changed and they were coming to group to de-stress, to be able to talk about whatever was bothering them throughout the week. And I really, really found that um, this was, was, a support, was a supportive group for them. I think university students as a whole could benefit from it. And education students certainly, I think it should be part of the curriculum. Not just even the 12 week program that, that they were doing, but, but more into the history and what mindfulness is and how it could help. Um, students going forward. Definitely. On this side, what I consider to be the worst day ever. Uh, it could be anything to you. I mean, to me, it's never usually anything specific. I just kind of toss some paint on the page and see how it makes me feel. <laughs> uh, and then after that, when you've painted your bad day, you fold this side over and you get a mirror image. And then you take paint and you turn this into a good day. And then you can take your good day and you put that onto your bad day and then both sides become good. Well, right now I'm taking the Con Ed program so that I can get my degree and my teacher's college done at the same time. I think that this kind of thing would help me kind of have something to bring to the table when it comes to teaching kids. Let's, let's use this as an example. This semester I had placement with grade fours and fives and I didn't really have anything that I could get on their level with and these kids were like running around with all their memes and I was like, uh, I don't know what's going on. Can you guys calm down? I think stuff like this could bring you to their perspective. Like, I haven't painted random crap since I was like five, six, seven. Like, that's just the way that the world works. So, I mean, I think people forget how to let go. I think that the program kind of made me sit back and think about the stuff that I was doing on the daily. And I needed that because I didn't know how to before. <laughs> I was just kind of like, a zombie running around my life, <laughs> falling over things, <laughs> and uh, questioning where I was going all the time. Yeah. Here comes the chaos. Put that down. But this is the best part. You just get to smush it all together. <laughs> this is the moment when everybody would start cringing because they were just clashing everything together. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> let me just mush this. 
Ooh. It's pretty messy. Probably could have put some more paint. I think I need more paint. <laughs> I was so worried coming into third year, like I was gonna just crash and burn like I did every other year because that's usually where it ends. You end up crashing and burning. It's not fun, but that's what you do. And then uh, I found out about this like last year and I didn't really take it seriously. I was like, oh, they're just gonna sit in the room and do some painting and stuff? Oh, maybe I'll do that. And I had no idea what to expect when I came here. I was like, uh, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> and uh, I think by the end of it, I was glad that I was showing up and I was glad that that was what I was choosing to spend my time on. And every week was like a restart button. I was lucky uh, enough to introduce this activity during my final placement in my professional year, Bachelors of Education. It was in a grade six setting and on a Friday, I observed that the students were quite exhausted. And they didn't want to be there. They just wanted to relax and just not do any work. So quickly, I just requested the permission of my associate teacher. And I said, I have something very fun for them. It will help them to calm down. It will help them to be prepared for anything remainder that you need to teach them during the day. She was so happy and very excited to see what was it all about. And here is I implemented. Uh, I... I knew that among my students there were a lot of different learners. Some were visual, some were auditorial, and some were kinesthetic. So I did a little bit of a modification to the original activity. I opened up a YouTube video that had a 60 second countdown. In that video, those who needed to hear it were hearing the countdown. Those who wanted to check how much seconds that they had left were looking at the screen. And I told them, using your pencil, I just want you to put your hand down, start doodling, and do not lift your pencil or your hand from your paper. You need to doodle continuously for 60 seconds, and we'll try and do this quietly. So I also participated because I wanted to model it for them, and I started trying my doodle, and they were quite excited. Who gets to doodle with their teacher? Like, it's, it's really fascinating. But uh, we made sure nobody was talking. And when there was 10 seconds left, I saw the students were still excited and because they didn't know what they had to do. And it was really interesting and funny for me to watch them. But I said, okay, three, two, one, pencils down. And they were just eyes wide open and waiting for me to prompt them what is the next step. So I told them. I'm going to open up a classical music piece, which is going to be very relaxing and soothing. In that time, please don't talk with your friends. All I want you to do is take a look at your doodle. I want you to try and find some images that you can find within it. And as soon as you find something, then you can start drawing it. I also told them, when I did this activity the first time myself, it wasn't too easy. Give yourself some time. Calm down, try and focus on what you can find. And that is what I'm going to do right now. There are not much support systems to support our students' well-being for teachers. Yes, there are educational assistants, there are various programs, but as a teacher, you want to do something in the classroom. You see your students and you know that they are experiencing high stress. You need to be able to pull out some little tricks that can help them in the short term unless it is something really serious. I think um, having such knowledge and some workshops that are geared to teachers uh, that can be helpful in the long term to support all students to blossom and flourish for their fullest potential. This HAP activity and the course is very important. I have took lots of notes of the activities I have implemented with my own children and I'm looking forward to supporting all of my future students. When I'm here, I was very stressed in the beginning. It was a good break in my week. 
I'm not as good at bringing things home. I'm not even good at bringing the stuff that my counselor teaches me to do at home, but I'm hoping that I can bring it into my classroom at least, and that eventually I'm able to bring it into my everyday life. I think I would have felt weird if I was the only one. The group atmosphere is what makes it easier for me to share. I feel like if you were just one-on-one -on -one with the authority figure or person running the group, it would be weirder sharing emotions. If everyone else is also sharing their emotions, then you feel like, I don't know, more comfortable. Everyone here is also having their problems, talking about their stress, and learning about mindfulness at the same time. I like being in a group. Mindfulness now to me is knowing your emotions, knowing your feelings, knowing your dreams and how to interpret them, almost and use them not necessarily to promote yourself, but to make yourself better. Being in a group makes it more social and you build friendships in the end. You meet people that you haven't met before and they're all in similar situations. It's nice because you actually get to see that you're not the only one feeling the things like stresses of being a student. It was nice to know that they had my back. And sometimes a lot of us were actually thinking the same things, feeling the same thing, having the same emotions and doing the group activities and seeing what we came up with was really, really nice. I'm usually not a very good communicator when it comes to how I feel. I bottle it up inside and then have a breakdown all by myself in my room. Because I talk about it every week when I'm here, I found myself outside of group putting names to my emotions more and talking about my feelings more with the people that it affected versus like not saying anything at all. <laughs>